So tonight we are back in the series, What Should We Expect? And we're going to be looking into uh, some more of, some, a couple of different aspects of the tribulation time that's going to be happening on the earth. A uh, time of, that, that we saw last time, it's a time of God's judgment on the earth. Not a time when God simply removes his hand, but, but these are intentional judgments that the Lord is bringing on the earth. And so that's going to be happening. Um, that's going to be happening after the church is snatched up, taken up. Um, we will be with him forever. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, at the, the trumpet sound. We're going to be, we're going to be called up. And, and right before we are, remember we just talked about this, the dead in Christ will rise. The, their, their bodies will be resurrected to glorified bodies. The spirits who are with the Lord right now and have been ever since the time of death will be reunited with those bodies. We will all meet together, meet the Lord in the air, we'll be with him forever. <clears throat> we talked about what's happening then um, post-rapture church, which we hit on this morning too. You know, the, the judgment seat of Christ, what that will entail. And, and while all of that's happening, and it's interesting to me to say, while that's happening, and, and meanwhile, on the earth, you know, we are in time here. God is outside of time. After we die, <coughs> or after the church is raptured, we, we will not be affected by time, which is which is an interesting thing to me. We will go to be with him where he is, and, and he's outside time and in space. And I still can't quite fathom what that's like. And so that's why I laugh when I say, meanwhile, you know, here on earth, well, <clears throat> it's not like we're going to be following him, we're going to be in time with him, just on a different plane. If I think about that too much, my, my head hurts. <laughs> but after the church is raptured, we are, there, there will be a time experience here on earth that will be unlike none other. And we talked about that. We go through hard things here. Think about all of the heartaches and, and stuff that happen now. It's hard, right? Life is hard. We just talk about <clears throat> the death of a brother. Life is hard. But it's nothing compared to what it's going to be like during the tribulation time on earth, during that seven-year period, that 70th week that Daniel talked about, that, that all hell essentially is going to be loose on the earth, <clears throat> and it's going to be a time of judgment, and what's happening then, we kind of looked at the timing of that and, and all of that before. And so I wanted to look at a, a couple of different aspects, things that we uh, we see specifically talking about these things in the tribulation time, not necessarily going verse by verse through through the, the book of the Revelation, though there's been different times in my study where I'm like, man, we can do that. But <laughs> but that's not that's not really the the the, the point here, I guess, uh, during this time. And so gonna be the last week was a kind of overview of the tribulation, looked at scriptures in Revelation and in Daniel, and tonight I wanted to kind of highlight the uh, two, two aspects of the tribulation time. One of them is the 144,000, because if you've spent any time in Revelation at all, you've seen that number. There's the 144,000, but also another aspect, I wanted to look at uh, into the two witnesses. Because we are, we're shown both of those in the scripture, and so what's the deal with them? You know, if I could, if I could just state it plainly. So what's, so what's up with the 144,000, and what's up with the two witnesses? And so we're going to be looking in, um, going to be looking into that, going to be in the, the book of the Revelation between chapter six and chapter twelve ish, and, uh, and just pointing out some, some different things in there. Before we go to that, please join me. Um, as we go to prayer. The Father God, I thank you tonight that you have allowed us the opportunity to gather back together here in this place for worship. I thank you that what, what we learn in the scriptures is, is relevant for life. It matters. If it didn't, you would not have put it 
in your word. I thank you for even today, knowing you're know, thinking about death. I thank you for what it is that we studied already, what it is that we have seen that your word says about death, the death of a believer. God, we're thinking, thinking back into what the text says. We, we know that we are present with you when, when, we, when we die here. We are present with you, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. Lord, and because of that truth, I know that the scripture also tells us that precious in your sight is the death of your saints. Lord, and I know that I know that our brother was looking forward to that, and, 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 and I'm looking forward to being home with you as well. So we praise you for the truth, the hope that we see in the scriptures you tell us. I, Thank you for your great care for us and your, your, your saving grace in our lives. And thank you, Father, for even as we look ahead and into what, what else is happening in the last days, thank you for your grace, your, your snatching us up out of this place before, before your wrath is poured out on, on, on earth and, and on wickedness. Lord, tonight I pray that you would help us to see Help us to know you more. Help us to see into your word. Um, Lord, I pray that it would give us a sense of urgency. I pray that it would give us a heart of compassion. And I pray that it would give us a, a heart of, of encouragement. The Lord as well. Do what you need to do as we pray. In Jesus' name. Thanks, I'm just going to keep my coffee right here because it really feels good in the back and through it. There's been talking a lot today. So, so tribulation time. I made a comment before that, that it's not all bad. Now, it's going to be ugly. I mean, because it's the judgment of God being poured out in. And it's <clears throat> and, and agents that the Lord uses in this will be anything from natural to supernatural. Uh, natural, meaning natural disasters, uh, wicked people, just like he used wicked nations in the past to, to bring judgment on Israel. God didn't make the wickedness, but he actually orchestrated it for his glory and his purposes. And so in the tribulation time, there will be uh, judgment brought on by uh, used, that God uses natural things, natural disasters and, and earthquakes, and I would submit to you that they are all supernatural. But things that we would see as natural, natural disasters, earthquakes, different things like that, um, things falling from the sky, uh, he will also use wicked people, and he will also use, uh, you know, uh, well, the, the wicked folks who, who are just fine being tools in the hand of the enemy. One of those wicked people who is, <clears throat> we're going to talk more about him later, but one of those wicked people uh, is known, uh, known to us as the Antichrist or the Beast. And will be, uh, he will be directly used by, by Satan or, or by the dragon and so we're going to be looking more into to him later. Right now, uh, last week we stopped by by talking about the first half of the uh, first half of the tribulation time. Uh, there will be judgments poured out. We looked at those the, the horsemen in Revelation chapter six. Um, we also saw the fifth uh, the fifth seal judgment. We saw the saints who have been martyred crying out to the Lord, Lord, when are you going to bring justice? When are you going to, to, to make this right? And remember what the Lord said? Hang on a little while longer until the number of your brothers is fulfilled, until the number reaches fullness of, of those who will come to faith and be martyred for their faith. And, 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 and then we see worse and worse things happening. Okay, you can read about those in, in chapter 6. 
Um, we see there's a great earthquake. We see the sun becoming black as sackcloth. The, the moon becoming like blood. And stars of the sky falling to the earth. Just as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. You know, like when you're outside and a strong wind comes and it's acorn season and they all start falling all around you. Um, and the leaves start falling. There's going to be some seriously... Um, amazing things happening. The scripture goes on to say the sky vanished like a scroll. There's going to be some sort of some sort of something that seriously affects the atmosphere. The sky vanished like a scroll that was being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. I don't even know what that's going to look like. But it's going to be some really, really catastrophic stuff. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? You think about all of the prominent people on earth, all of the ones who, who you know, they, they are in charge. You know, and they're, they're in charge of, of, of armies and nations and peoples. And, and we see a picture of people hiding out and essentially calling out for death. Oh, that they would, that the mountains would fall on us to save us from the wrath of Him who is coming. And, and so there's some pretty serious stuff going on this catastrophic in this tribulation time. Again, all God's judgment on wickedness. Now, I want to focus on the, the 144,000 and the two witnesses. And there's probably going to be more questions that you have, like, wait, you just mentioned this, and that's all you're going to say about it? <clears throat> Yet, probably for now. Do some study. You know, do some digging. I hope this is actually kind of whetting your appetite for the book of the Revelation. I don't know about you, but, but this book causes a lot of people to shy away. Well, this book doesn't cause people to shy away. But a lot of people shy away from this book because, because I don't understand everything in here. Oh, I encourage you to dig in and do some study. So, <clears throat> it's all talking about the tribulation time, the great tribulation, which is the second half. And... And he goes on to tell us about the 144,000. The 144,000 mentioned beginning in chapter 7, and we also see them uh, also see them mentioned in 14, chapter 14. But listen to what the text says in chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels, this is John's vision. I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice of the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. So this 144,000 are, are those from the tribes of Israel, from Israel, part of the Jewish people. Remember the, the, the people who were God's chosen people? And, and the scripture says that, you know, some, some folks think that God replaced Israel with the church. And that's not true. It's not true. Or, or read through the scriptures. Israel is still God's chosen people. He made promises to Abraham and, and his descendants after them. And he grafted in Gentiles. Uh, he saved us by his grace when Israel rejected. But his plan for Israel has not been tossed in the trash can. You know, when Paul, uh, Peter and Paul, they, uh, uh, you know, back in, in their ministry, we see, uh, we see ministry being extended to the Gentiles, Jesus being 
They extend it to the Gentiles. And, and, and we're told that's because, well, it was, it was prophesied of from old. As a matter of fact, it's throughout the prophets that, that the Gentiles were going to be, to be gathered in as well. But Israel rejected the Messiah. But the promises never got pitched in the trash. And so God saves a remnant. And check this out. So in the time of tribulation, now, um, of course, have there been Jews saved? Are there Messianic Jews? Absolutely, who have come to faith in the only real Messiah, which is Jesus. But, but check this out. After the rapture, during the tribulation, check out what happens. God seals 144,000 from the tribe, tribes of Israel. And, and we are told specifically there will be 12,000 from each one of the tribes. Sealed by God. What does this being sealed mean? <clears throat> well, it says they're sealed. They're servants of our God, sealed on their foreheads. This is a, uh, this is a, a reference to God doing something here. This is a, a remnant who, who come to faith in the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. They are sealed by God before the seventh judgment comes. This is a, uh, uh, you know, the scripture talks about us being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, a, a seal is, is essentially someone putting their mark on something. You know, sealed as my own. This is what God does. This is what He has done for us. This is what He is going to do for this 144,000 in the tribulation time. Sealing them with uh, some, some, sort, uh, some sort of a, 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 an obvious physical mark, perhaps. But, but sealing them with, with His mark, with His spirit, with His protection and His power. Now he seals them. Uh, they, will be, they will be protected during this tribulation time. This will be a remnant during this time. But, but they're going to be operating under the power and the protection of the Holy Spirit. And so, check out what happens right after this. This 144,000 are going to be witnesses. They are going to be witnesses. They are going to be lovers of the Lamb, which we see that actually, let me pause here for a second. We see that uh, in Revelation 14. We get another, we get another uh, glimpse at this 144,000. The 144,000 sealed of Israel who are witnesses. Check out what it says in chapter 14. Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Are you glad that when we are, when we are God's, we are his? You know, the scripture talks about him you know, engraving our name, uh, you know, putting our name in the Lamb's book of life, and uh, you know, having our names engraved on his hand and stuff like that. Are you glad that when we are God's, we are his? We are His. He says, you are mine. And there ain't nothing anybody can do about it. This 144,000, they had His name and, and His Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the roar of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they were singing a new song before the throne and before the living creatures and before the elders. Isn't that something? You know, as John is explaining what he's hearing, he can't even quite really describe it. It's like it's like this, it's like it's like this, and it's like this. You know, beyond what we can actually even put into words or fathom. <coughs> but um, he, oh, sorry, I lost my place. So no one can learn the song except them. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women. Uh, for their virgins. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. I love that description. 
It is these who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They, these 144,000 that have come to faith in the, the true Messiah, their Jewish Messiah, Jesus Christ, they, they are His. He, they are sealed with His mark, with His Spirit, and they are sold out to the Lamb. Remember in, uh, it was earlier on in Revelation, I believe it was in chapter 5, when they were like, who is worthy to take up the scroll and open the seals? And, and, and it was said, I saw one standing who looked like a lamb who had been slain. He was worthy to take up the lamb, or take up the scroll and open the seals. This 144,000, they are loyal to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. They are loyal to the only Messiah, Jesus Christ. They follow Him wherever He goes. I love this. This 144,000, these are going to be on fire witnesses during this time of tribulation from the Jewish people, from Israel. Essentially, Essentially doing what Israel would have been doing way back when. What they should have been doing way back when. And so this 144,000 aren't, they won't be just sitting around and, and like, cool. <sighs> we just get to wait for the coming of the Lord. They will be, they will be witnesses in this time. That's why... Um, you know, I said that, that the tribulation won't be all bad. And what I mean by that is that there will be many who come to faith in Jesus during this time. Now, of course, salvation is a work of the Lord, right? But how will they, how will they hear without someone preaching? This 144,000 are going to be evangelists and witnesses during this time on earth. Look what happens right after they're mentioned. After John sees the vision of the 144,000 who are sealed by God from the Jewish people. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number. From every nation, from all tribes and peoples, languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So after we hear about this 144,000 who were sealed, then John says, and after this, I saw this vision of the throne room. And there's a distinction, we talked about this before. There's a distinction here between the saints, these ones who were told here, they're the ones who have been saved coming out of the tribulation time. There's a distinction between them and the elders, the church that was raptured before the great tribulation. 144,000 are busy witnessing to the true Messiah. Witnessing to what He has done, who He is in this time. And so there will be peoples of all nations that they are witnessing to that will come to faith in Jesus. Now we see that they are going to be martyred for their faith. They will be killed for their faith. It's 144,000. They, they will be used greatly during this time. Now, after the, the desolation of the temple, which I know I'm just pausing real hard here and, and looking back. So after the, the desolation of the temple, which happens at the midpoint of the tribulation, at the desolation of the temple, which the Antichrist will do, essentially set him up, himself up as God, worship me, he will turn from the covenant that he made with Israel, he will turn against Israel. He will be coming hard for Israel. 
Um, Israel, after he breaks covenant with them, um, they will flee, many will flee to the wilderness and, and, and be protected by God. We, uh, you saw Jesus mention this, talk about this in Matthew 24, when he was talking about the great tribulation time of to come. He said, you know, flee to the mountains at that point. And so we see that, but we also get a glimpse of that, and I know, bear with me as I just pause pretty hard there, but we also get a glimpse of that in, in Revelation 12. And so I trust that you're taking notes, I'll have these notes available as well. But Revelation 12, we, we get this, uh, this glimpse of what has happened. Uh, the woman in chapter 12 is a representation of, of Israel. And, and we see the dragon, um, which is a representation of, of Satan. Um, we see that his tail, the dragon, swept down a third of the stars from heaven and cast them to the earth. This is the rebellion that happened in heaven. You know, of Satan rebelling against God and sweeping uh, with him uh, in the rebellion a, a third of the angels which we know of here as demons. He stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Who was the one born of Israel? The Savior to come. That he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Okay, so the, the child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman fled to the wilderness where she was prepared by God in which she was to be nourished for 1,260 days. So we see that this, this exile of, of Israel, this is talking about after Jesus came, he, he ascended, this is, this is now post-rapture, tribulation time. Israel fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. 1,260 days is three and a half years. And so this second half of the tribulation time, Israel, um, there will be, there will be uh, a remnant of Israel who flees, who will be supernaturally protected by God. But, um, and, and so the Antichrist is going to love to try to kill them. He wants to destroy Israel. He wants to destroy the chosen people of God. If you read on in chapter 12 here, you're going to see that uh, that. The, the dragon or Satan wants to pursue Israel, wants to destroy them, and, and his efforts are squelched. They are routed. And he is upset, and so he will go after all of the offspring of the woman, essentially all of those who now trust in Jesus from every tribe and nation in the tribulation time. And so there's going to be war. He can't kill all of Israel. And so he wants, to, he wants to eliminate those of the Gentiles who are now believing in, in the Lord. Now, again, there's, there's those coming to faith in the Messiah because of the witnesses. The 144,000 that are being used to witness and who are, who are protected. And also the two witnesses that we're about to talk about. So these two witnesses, we see them in chapter 11. And I know, I, I apologize if, if I have like breakneck speeds here. I, I don't intend to. I, I intend to, um, to help paint a picture that the scriptures are painting here and give you some more material to go study with. So 144,000 are those from Israel who are sealed. They, they, they turn to the Messiah. They are sealed. They are witnesses on the earth. There are people coming to Jesus. We also have the two witnesses that maybe you have heard about in chapter 11. <clears throat> Verse 3. God says that I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Does that number sound familiar? 1,260 days. You see this uh, uh, 42 months, which is equal to three and a half 
years, this three and a half year period, um, this time, times, and half a time that Daniel talked about, which was uh, which was the time that the Antichrist is going to be uh, in, in all out war and rebellion, um, obvious rebellion against God and and His people, <clears throat> and so. They are going to have authority. These two witnesses, this is, this is apart from the 144,000 that we're talking about. These two witnesses are going to have authority to prophesy or to declare. Um, prophesy is not, a lot of times when we hear the word prophesy, we're thinking to foretell the future. Uh, prophets would do that when they had a word from the Lord. That the, the, the word of the Lord says this, and they would... Uh, in some of their prophecies, it would be what's going to happen in the future. But, but prophesying is not just that. Prophesying is speaking forth. And so uh, speaking forth that which God has given to say. And so these two witnesses will be preaching. They will be proclaiming during this time. They will have authority from God. They'll be prophesying. They will be clothed in sackcloth. Now sackcloth... Um, was uh, was a, was a symbol of, <clears throat> of of grief and uh, mourning and repentance and 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 so they will be preaching in, in this time and they're going to be given authority they're going to be given protection and supernatural abilities and so surely they're going to be proclaiming uh, they're going to be speaking out against sin against the rebellion that that people are, are, are in against God. They're going to be speaking about the, the sin that people are in. Now, how, how are people typically received when they're speaking out against the rebellion that a big group of people are in? They're typically not always received well. We're going to see that that's the case here. But it's not the case all over the place. Because I, I love it that even in the time of the tribulation, that people are going, as we already mentioned, people are going to be coming to the understanding of their sin and coming to the Savior. And so these two witnesses are going to be preaching. People are going to be turning to the Lord. But other people who will not turn to the Lord are going to be very angry at them. Now, they're preaching this, this uh, whole time. They're described as, um, sorry, I meant to tell you this when I started talking about them. They, they're described as two olive trees and two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. That's a, uh, it's a likely a, a, a symbol, symbolic of, uh, of, of spiritual revival. And so... So to give you a little bit of insight into some of the ministry of these two, proclaiming the gospel, which starts with the bad news, right? So proclaiming judgment and the gospel by them and the 144,000 will turn many to the Lord. Now, these two witnesses are going to have supernatural protection and power. Staying right here in chapter 11 in, in the book of the Revelation, in verse 5, says this, And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. <laughs> These two witnesses that God has ordained to proclaim the truth and the gospel throughout this time of tribulation, it, it's a hostile environment. The environment that we're in right now is not a hostile environment. But listen, the gospel changes lives. And so even in this hostile environment, there will be people coming to the understanding that I am a sinner and need a Savior. And Jesus is the Messiah. But there will be people who want to kill them. Have you ever heard about any heard of anybody uh, you know crying out against quote unquote hate speech? You're offending me. Oh, I've heard I've heard preachers um, gone after for that by simply preaching the Bible. 
look, these two proclaiming the truth of God will be come after by people who want to kill them. But the Bible says that God will actually have give them supernatural power so that anybody coming to kill them, fire will proceed out of their mouth and those people will be consumed. I can't even quite imagine what that's going to look like. It sounds like sci-fi, you're right. It makes me think that the, after the first person does it, nobody else would. But look, the, the hardness of hearts and the, the spiritual blindness that exists will cause people to continue to try, surely. Because they're not, they not driven by logic, they're driven by the enemy of God. They are animated by the evil one. Now we know that the Antichrist, that we're going to be talking about later, the Antichrist is the one who is, um, who is pointedly animated from the enemy. But people will try to kill these, and, and if they do, before their work is done, the Lord will cause the, the enemies to be consumed by fire from their mouth. It makes me makes me uh, remember again that, you know, we, uh, I forget who, whose quote this is, but I heard a quote, and I, I, I apologize, we'll have to look it up later. Um, I heard Dar David Jeremiah say it, so it might be original to him, but it might not. He said that the man of God and the will of God is immortal until his task is finished. The man of God in the will of God is immortal until his task is finished. I'm really glad to know that whatever it is that God has for us to do, we ain't going to die until we're finished with it. These witnesses, they were not, they, before they are finished with the task that they have been given, they are immortal. Fire will proceed from their mouth to consume any who would try to harm them. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. Wow. Wow. Also, they have the power to shut up the sky that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying, and they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. They have the ability, it says... To shut the sky so that no rain may fall during the days of the prophesying. It will rain no more. It, it, it's done raining while we're speaking. They have the ability to, to strike the waters so that they turn to blood. And to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. The power that God, the supernatural power that God is bestowing on these two witnesses is, is of biblical proportions. If I can use that term in jest, because it's biblical. Mm -hmm. Do you know, does your mind go to anybody else in the scriptures who, who God used in those specific ways? Moses. Elijah Moses. prayed, yes, Elijah prayed in, in and the Lord withheld rain until he prayed again. That was like for a few years, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and yeah, and then they prayed again and it rained. And, and, and who else? Moses. 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 The Lord, of course, it wasn't in Moses, right? It wasn't in Moses to do this, but the Lord supernaturally gave him these powers for such a time as this to do these wonders before Pharaoh. To, uh, to, to carry out, uh, to declare, I guess, all of these plagues that the Lord was going to, to do on the earth. One of those was turning the water to blood. So it has been speculated that these two witnesses might perhaps be Elijah and Moses. Now, we don't know that. I can't tell you that for, for a fact. But it has been speculated that, that, that it will be them. No matter, no matter if it is or if it is not, 
These witnesses are going to be something else. Many will turn to the Lord because of their ministry, and many will absolutely hate them because of their ministry. The Antichrist will be one of them, because the power of God will be going out from them. The power of God to salvation to all who believe. <laughs> and many will be turning to the Lord, and the Antichrist can't do anything about it. Because they are protected with the supernatural protection and supernatural powers. However, when their appointed time comes, the Lord removes the supernatural protection from them. And the Antichrist seizes on that moment and he kills them. These two who many have come before and tried to do harm to them and they were consumed by fire from their mouth. And now the Lord says, okay, that time is done. The protection is removed. You see that in the very next verse. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And so they will now be dead. Their dead bodies will, will lay in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt. Where the Lord was crucified. This is, this is a reference to Jerusalem. For three and a half days, some of the peoples and tribes and languages and, and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and exchange presents because these two prophets had been a torment to those who dwell on the earth. Look at the giddy joy that is happening from the wicked nations, the wicked individuals, that these prophets are destroyed. Didn't even affect them that like, wow, the power of God is clearly on them, so we might must turn. No, they were still fully in the rebellion, and, and all they wanted was for the noise to stop. The noise of the truth of the gospel all they wanted was for the noise to stop. Stop telling me what is wrong with me. I don't want to hear that truth. I don't want to hear it. And when they are dead, they will be allowed to lie there so that everybody can look, so that everybody can see. And, and people will actually take that time to give gifts to each other, like, like a Christmas celebration. <laughs> Isn't that something, how we celebrate the birth of Christ and, and, and we give gifts to one another? They will take this opportunity to be joyful and happy. It's like, oh, that, that noise has stopped. We're going to celebrate by giving gifts to one another. Crazy. But, listen to this, after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood up on their feet. <laughs> and great fear and great fear fell on those who saw them. I, I bet so. Because you know what happened when you came against them before? Fire came out of their mouth and they killed you. And now after they've been dead for three and a half days, God himself brought them back to life. And here they stand again. And great fear fell on everyone. <clears throat> they didn't go back to the ministry that they had been about. The ministry of prophesying. They didn't go back to that time. That was done. That time was done. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies watched them. Oh man, this, I'm telling you, this is going to be an amazing sight. This is going to be a time of ministry in, in the earth during the tribulation when, when God's judgments are being poured out. Even yet, his grace is extended, his mercy is extended by allowing people to turn, by calling people to turn to him. So we have the 144,000 Jewish witnesses, we have the two witnesses that have been given the supernatural power, and this is going to be a sight. Rejection equals judgment. And so now the two witnesses, they are raised back to life, and they weren't allowed to be killed again. God said, and a voice was heard, God said, come up here. 
It sounds a whole lot like the snatching up, doesn't it? It sounds kind of familiar to, you know, to what happened to Elijah. Remember that? If that, if that is Elijah, you, you, that twice. <laughs> you got taken up and, and, and taken up. They get taken up. And it's going to be in the sight of people. God says, come up here. And their enemies watched them. And as we close, there's a, <clears throat> as that happens, there's a great earthquake. A tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to God. Glory to the God of heaven. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening during the tribulation time. Part of which will, will be Israel uh, uh, being protected by God. Will be 144,000 um, Jewish evangelists that are sealed by God, that are, that are proclaiming to the nations. And from their ministry, we get a, a fast forward glimpse into the heavenlies and, and there are these tribulation saints who have been killed and now they are, they have been made new. They, they washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb, it said. Also have the ministry of the two witnesses. And, and, and in all of this time, we have the Antichrist in, in uh, what, what appears to be ruling, though we, know, uh, though we know who actually rules. The Antichrist ruling, we're going to be talking more about him next time to get a, a little bit of a better picture of, of who he is according to the scriptures. And, um, and we'll go on from there. But the time of tribulation, again, God's judgment on the earth won't be pretty, but there will be those being saved during the tribulation. Um, this is all a precursor to the, the final um, coming of the Lord, um, which we'll be talking about more later. I praise the Lord. We, we serve a God who is on the throne, who will remain on the throne, who never... Who never lets go. So even during the time of tribulation, this isn't God, you know, skipping out of town. But this is these are actually God's judgments. He is very active in the lives of men. He is very active here, and so he is not he is not disengaged. But this is a time of judgment, and even out of this judgment comes more salvation. Praise Him for that. Well, Father God, I thank you um, <clears throat> for your word. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see it all more clearly. Um, God, even if I, even, you know, even in spite of these faulty lips, help us to, to know you more, to know your word more, to get a clearer picture of what is to come according to your word. <clears throat> I thank you that you have not relinquished your power. You will not relinquish your power ever at all. Never ever. Even during the time of the tribulation, which is to come. Thank you for your great love for us, Father. Um, I, 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 I pray you. I pray that this would spur on within us a, a, an encouragement, again, a sense of urgency, a heart of compassion, Lord, because we never know when this is going to start. Um, Lord, if we are taken up tonight, if you if you take us up tonight, we have no more opportunity to be one of those that proclaim the good news of the gospel, the, the power of God to salvation. If we're taken up tonight, Lord, if, if, if you snatch up your church tonight, Lord, the, the tribulation starts. It starts as the Antichrist arises and makes covenant with Israel, and, 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 and his turning against Israel is, is only about three and a half years off. Which is, which is the events that we're talking about tonight. And, and so, Father, I pray that you would spur us on, Lord, and increase a sense of urgency in us to, to have compassion on those around us that, that don't know the Savior. God, that your praise and the good news of the gospel would always be on our lips. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.